Got the, the pan liners done, they're water tested. They sat over the weekend with water. Uh, we drained them. I got some gravel around the wheat poles. You want to make sure that you have wheat pole protection. You can use gravel, you can use chunks of tiles, spacers, but there's a whole driveway full of gravel, so that's what we're using today. I got um, mixed up my deck mud here. Some of you guys call it dry pack. Here in California, we call it deck mud. Our deck mud is a either four or five to one sand to cement ratio, pre-bagged. I like a leaner mixture, five to one. It's easier to use and we've never had any issues and it actually allows water to run through it a little bit easier because in these water in, water out systems, you want as much porosity as possible with that mortar bed. You want things to drain through it as easily as possible. So this uh, five to one Dynacrete deck mud works really good. So we're gonna get going on it. What I have here is a couple, uh, I'm gonna use these as screen strips. These strips are gonna rest on the edge of the drain. I do have them notched out. This is the floor tile we're using, these little hexagons. I made a notch, the thickness of that tile. So that's gonna give us the correct gauge so that the tile comes up and rests when it's finished at the top of the drain. I'll show you that here in a second. But I have three different lengths of sticks that I made. These are just strips of lattice. My longest one is gonna reach from the drain all the way to the corner. My second strip is gonna reach to the, to the middle of this wall. And then I got a shorty that's gonna hit the short sides. I also have uh, these, these are just some scrap two by two tiles that I had laying around. I'm gonna put these in the corners of the pan and those are gonna be my level points. It's a little easier to keep track of your level on the perimeter if you put these little tiles in here. So let me go ahead and just dump out my mud. I'm gonna start by getting my mud packed around. Um, actually, before I do that, I wanna get some tape on this drain. I'm just gonna spread my mud out and get my first level, which I'm gonna put right here. So I need three quarters of an inch fall from the farthest point, which is at the corners. Three feet, that's gonna give me three quarters of an inch. So I got these three tiles as spacers, that gives me three quarter. But since the tile is gonna be finished flush with the top and the mud's gonna be indented, I'm gonna just do two on top of the drain and that will give me my correct slope if I get it level here. So I'm gonna take my little two, two by two tile and put it there. And I'm gonna knock this level. You see I'm level there. Now if I take this off, you see, um, I need three quarters of inch of slope, which will end up being down here after I remove this tile, because we're a quarter we're a quarter inch lower uh, where we need to be, so that the tile finishes flush with the top of that drain. So I could have either I, I set two two tiles here a half inch, but it's actually three quarters of an inch from down below on the mud there. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that I got our main perimeter point we're gonna be working off of this tile, I'm gonna put another one right here in that corner. And I got a 30 inch uh, straight edge right here. And I'll take my two foot level, because just because I don't have a 30 inch level. That'd be a good size, 30 inch level would be a good one to have for working in showers. So I'm gonna 
make sure that I'm all the way down there. Okay, so now these two little tiles are level with each other and I'm going to do another one on the back wall here. So now these points are level. Now I'm going to take take this tile and I'm going to get that it level from that point to this point. I don't have a five foot level either so I'm going to just kind of have to make this work. I got my three level points. Uh, I don't have this one yet because I'm working right here and I don't want to have to bend over too far. But uh, we got leveled here, level here. So I'm going to take my, my trowel. I've been using Marshalltown trowels ever since I've been doing tile. My grandpa was probably using Marshalltown trowels. So, I mean, some of my trowels I've had since the very beginning. This is a good size for doing pans. It's small enough to fit into the tighter areas. But now that I have my, my level points, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make sure I'm packed down a little bit, get some of this extra, extra mortar out, this extra dry pack. Being careful not to dig into my screen lines there. But I also like to have a wood float. This is this is a Marshalltown wood float, and I use this a lot when I'm when I'm packing my pans. So I'm just going to spread the mud out where I think it, it's going to need to be, based on my screeds that I've already set up here. And I'm just going to give it a little tam. You'll notice I'm not going crazy, slamming this mud down as hard as I can. Again, I want this mud to be porous. I want it to drain really well. So I'm not packing it too tight. I'm going to pack it here behind my screen line. And now I'm just going to start using my sticks. And again, it's got this notch which is going to fit on the drain. Right here. And I can just start going in the corners. So I start hitting, hitting that tile, like you can hear it hitting that tile. So now I got a nice slope in that corner. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And there we go. We're resting on, on the tile. Now I'm going to take my shorter stick that goes all the way to the wall. And I'm going to take it right to the to the screed line that I made in between those two points. Now 
I kind of have this fan shape here and I'm just going to take out some of the extra mud, put it behind me. my little stick and do the shorter area. You need to make sure you pack it down though before you you use the stick. Make sure it's just tamped down. I almost feel like it shouldn't be called packing it. I feel more like it's tamping. It's more of just a little tamp than a pack. Keep your wood float clean. You can just give it a nice little scrape. You don't want to put it in water and get it wet. It kind of messes things up. So I try not to sponge it. I just take my trowel and clean the cement that gets on it. I'm just going to tamp this down a little bit more. And I'm going to use this kind of in a circle motion to just smooth out that transition where I went from the bigger stick to the smaller stick. over here. And if you need to add any mud, if you gouged in a little bit too far like I did uh, back behind here, just sprinkle a little bit of mud in there, tamp it down, and then go in your, uh, you know, your circular motions. That's how, uh, that's how the mud likes to work, little circles. Okay, so I got that side done. I'm gonna go ahead and get, get my last little tile in that corner. I'm gonna go level from there to there and from there back over to this one.
So we got a nice dry pack pan on top of the pan liner, protected weed poles, water in, water out system. So everything that gets in here is gonna be able to evacuate. I'm just gonna double check here with my little hexagon tile. It's right at the correct elevation. So again, the recess that we put into our little notches in the sticks was the thickness of the tile. Plus, we're allowed for a little bit of thin set. We're gonna be using probably a quarter inch by quarter inch notch trowel, knocked down pretty flat. A little one by one doesn't use a whole lot. Might even use a V-notch. So there's just a little room to bring it up with thin set, but that's, that's what you want. So, this step is done, we're gonna let this cure, and then I'm gonna come back. I'll probably won't come back, today is Thursday. I'll probably won't come back till Monday or Tuesday next week, and I'll show you how we float the walls. We're gonna float the walls on this, uh, and I'm gonna be doing something uh, special to prevent any moisture that gets into this pan from waking up the walls or waking up and over the curb. Uh, Star Tile turned me on to this idea where we basically put a, a water stop, like a, I guess it would be a, a capillary action preventer in between the floor mud and the wall mud and the curb mud so the water doesn't wake up and over and cause any damage outside of the shower. So stay tuned for that. We'll be doing that video. But thanks again for joining me today. I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.